Hey Popcorn Kid Crew, how's everybody doing? I have another wonderful story to share with you. This is called Sandreon. It's by Robert D. Sansucci and it's illustrated by Brian Pinckney. Sandreon is a beautiful interpretation of the story we all know as Cinderella. And there's so many wonderful versions of Cinderella. And I decided to share this version with you. I hope you enjoy it. Hey, you guys. Miss V wants to tell you that you are the greatest. And I also want you to tell yourself that you are the greatest. Miss V loves you. And I enjoy sharing these beautiful stories with you. And I hope you enjoy them. Are you ready to go on this journey? Because I know you're going to enjoy it. All right, here we go. Oh, by the way, let me say, there are words in this story. They're French words. And you guys, I'm struggling reading them. So please be patient with me. In the back, there's a glossary and it helps you to pronounce the words. So I'm going to try the best I can. All right, guys. Please be patient with me. All right, here we go. The illustrations are out of this world, you guys. I'll make sure you see all the pictures. I live on a green, green island in the so blue Mer des Antilles, the Caribbean Sea. Long ago, when I was a child, my family was poor. My mother died, and she left me only one thing, a wand of mahogany. Three taps will change one thing into another, my mother had whispered, but only for a short time. And the magic must be used to help someone you love. Of what use? was this to an orphan like me, who every day struggled to find shelter and fill her belly. I could not use the wand. I had no one to love and no one who loved me. When I grew up, I worked as a blind chaseuse, a washerwoman scrubbing other people's sheets and shirts at the riverside and drying them in the sun. One woman I worked for was kind. I often nursed her for she was always sickly and poor. In thanks, she made me the nanan or godmother of her baby girl, Sandreon. When I held that baby in my arms on her christening day, I felt such love and I saw love return from her sweet brown eyes. Alas, Sandrion's mama died soon after this. Then her papa, Mansour, married again. Madame Prosperin was a cold woman and puffed up proud because her grandfather had come from France. When a daughter, Vitalon, was born, Madame gave a christening party for her rich friends. What a feast it was. Madame and the other fine ladies were dressed in satin and velvet, all the colors of the rainbow. They laughed at my worn white skirts and peasant's way of speaking. Pretty Sandrion came and kissed me. Bonjour, Nanan. She gave me a cup of punch and her hands were blistered and red. Poite Sondrion, poor little girl, I cried. What have you done to yourself, she shrugged. My father's work. My father works me like a servant girl, and Mansour allows this. Sighing, she said, her, 
He fears Madame, but I am strong. The work hurts my hands, but not my heart. Someday I will find a way to help. Even as I spoke them, my words sounded hollow. What could I, a poor washerwoman, do for my dearest? When she was older, Sandrayan would come to the river each morning to do the family's laundry. Her sweet bonjour was her music, her smile and sunshine even when clouds hid in the sun. We knelt beside the other Blanchezuses and talked and we sang and we laughed as we scrubbed the clothes. Sandrayan seemed so happy. I wish that I could always see her so. Nothing was easy for her at home. Madame and her spoiled daughters. Sandrion had only a handful of manic flour and a tail end of codfish. All day she worked and at night's end she slept on a hard straw pallet. Then one day she came sad faced to the river. No singing or joking would make her smile. I ask, what troubles you, my child? What do you think's wrong with Sandra on, guys? There's a ball tonight, but I am not going to go, she said, looking so miserable. My heart nearly snapped in two. Fiddleline and Mama will go, but Mama says, I'm lazy. Does it mean so much to you, this ball? Oh, yes, Nanan, she cried. It is a birthday fit for Paul, Monsieur Tibault's son. He's so handsome and well-spoken. He is like a prince, yet he is kind. Do not cry, dear one, I said, hugging her. Tonight you will go to the ball. For true? Upon my soul, I promise this, I said, though I was fearful of risking so much when I had no plan. But her smile lightened my heart. As she gathered up her laundry, I heard her singing. Long after she left, I sat watching the river. How am I going to keep my promise, I asked myself. When I could think of no answer, I prayed to Bande, good God, and he answered because I began to think what I must do. It was dark when I reached home, took my mother's wand from the shelf, and hurried to my sweet Sandrion. What a hubble of bubble at the house. Sandrion's papa stood on the porch holding his gold watch while the coachman waited beside the family carriage. We are late, Monsieur said, as if the fault belonged to me. Inside, Madame and Vitaline were shouting, Sandrion, find my shoulder scarf. Sandrion, comb my hair. I helped arrange Madame's gown while Sandrion combed Vidaline's hair. Finally, they were off and away. Good riddance. Upon the instant, I told Sandrion, now you will go to the ball. But I have no carriage, she protested. I have no gown. Go into the garden and pick a fruit upon, I said. The child looked at me as if she thought my poor Nanan's gone mad. But she found a big round breadfruit. I trapped these three times with my wand and it became a gilded coach. Tap, tap, tap. So far, so good.
Sandreon gasped, but I told her, Do not waste your breath on questions. We still have so much to do. Tap, tap, tap. Six agutas in a cage became six splendid carriage horses. Tap, tap, tap. Five brown lizards became five tall footmen. Tap, tap, tap. A plump manicou was changed into a coachman. Guys, I'm trying with these words. Please forgive me. I'm saying it correct. It's French. Then I tapped Sandra on. Her poor calico dress was changed to a trailing gown of sky blue velvet. Upon her head sat a turban just as blue, pinned with a trembled pin of gold. She had silk shoulder scarves, pale rose, rings in her ears, bracelets, and a necklace of four strands of gold beads, bigger than peas. Upon her feet were elegant pink slippers embroidered with roses. It was enough to hurt my eyes to look at my darling. Finally, I turned my washerwoman shift into a fine red dress. I would chaperone Sandra on as a suited, proper young lady. They look wonderful. They're getting ready to go to the ball. Do you know what's gonna happen in this story? Do you know, guys? Away we went over the bridge through the town, along the shore to the grand mansion of Mansour Tabot. Just before we stepped down from our carriage, I warned Sandreon, the magic lasts only a short time. We must leave before the midnight bell is rung. Yes, Nanan, she promised. These illustrations are fantastic. What a great entrance Sandrion made. All eyes towards her could not turn away. I heard whispers all around. Who is that pretty girl? Look how fine her clothes are. Did she come from France? Even Sandrion's stepmother and sister did not recognize the two of us. They peered crossly at us. Then Paul, his eyes blazing with love fire, asked her to dance, and he refused to dance with any other. I know, because I was there watching as I ate. Oh, what fine food I helped myself to as I watched the handsome couple. I even had chocolate sorbet. Sandrian was so happy, and I was so happy seeing her that we forgot to mark the time. Suddenly, I heard distant bells striking at the first chime of midnight. Astonishing with all my rudeness, I grabbed Sandrian's hand and I cried, It's nearly midnight. We must go. For a moment, I feared she would not obey, and then she turned and we ran towards the door. Paul cried, Wait! I don't even know your name. He ran after us, but guests and servants, confused by such running and shouting, blocked his way. As it was, we barely escaped to our carriage because Sandrion stumbled on the stair. She had to leave behind one embroidered slipper. Off we sped into the night as I counted the chimes, and the moment I heard the twelfth stroke 
we found ourselves on a dusty road beside a smashed breadfruit. Around us were agoutis and lizards and a fat manatee who scurried away into the bushes. We walked home like two ragged old washerwomen. Our fine clothes were gone, all except Sandrayon's one pink slipper. You heard this before. I love it. She took it off saying, I will keep this to remind me of this wonderful night and a happiness I will never know again. But I said, I will help you visit Paul again. She shook her head. I see now that it was not Sandrian he fell in love with, she said. He was under the spell of your wand. When the magic goes, the love goes too. And it will fade from his eyes. Alas, I said, my plans have come to nothing. I cannot give you the gift of love that would change your life for true. Dear Godmother, she said, kissing my cheek, you gave me this night. It is enough. I did not see Sandrian at the river the next day. When I called at the house, I found she was still in bed. Madame and Vitaline said she was being lazy, but I saw she was sick with a broken heart. I stroked her brow for a good long time until I heard a great commotion. When I looked for the cause, I found that Paul had arrived. He was followed by a footman carrying Sandrayon's lost pink slipper on a satin pillow. To Madame and Vitaline, he explained, I am searching for the lovely stranger who was at the fete last night. This is her slipper. I am asking all unmarried young women on the island to try it on. I will wed the one whose foot it fits. From the doorway, I heard Madam say, my pretty daughter is the only unmarried girl in this house. Then Vitaline and her mama tried to force the girl's big foot with toes like sausages in the slipper. Such grunting and groaning you've never heard. So eager were they, I feared they were going to destroy the slipper. If you cut off those big toes, I called out, it would be a fine fit. Madame screeched, go away, old woman. And I did, straight to Sandrion's room, and I marched. Look at them trying to put the shoe. Now, child, if you love me, I charged her, do this one thing for me. Go out into the hall. She drew a shawl around her cotton shift. Barefoot, she went into the hall, where panting madam and sobbing Vitaline had given up the battle of the slipper. But just as Paul was turning to go, I tapped Sandra on. Tap, tap, tap with my wand to the astonishment of all. She appeared as she had the, at the ball. No, godmother, dear, she said. No more spells. With a sigh, I touched her again, and she was as she was before, in her shawl and her shift. Without hesitation, Paul knelt before her. Gently, he placed the slipper on her foot, and then he said, You are as beautiful this minute as you were last night and everyone in the room could see the true love in his eyes. Sandrayon and Paul were married soon after this event. Even the king and queen of France had never seen such a wedding. The guests ate and danced and sang and ate again for three days. I know because I was there. I danced the guaca and ate my eight and nine helpings of chocolate sorbet and came away only to tell you this tale.
The end. Oh, wow. You guys, did you enjoy this story? This is a story that relates to love. It relates to family. And it relates to a beautiful ending. I want you all to think about Cinderella and make comparisons. If you have a chance, I want you to leave some comments below and share what you think about the story. It's really one of my favorites. I'm gonna give you a hug, a kiss, and peace and love. I'll see you soon, guys.